welcome to this year's campus update. I've been a part of this university for 44 years, but as interim chancellor, I've had the unique opportunity to see the university with fresh eyes. And I'm pleased to say the university is as strong as it's ever been. Over the years, I was fortunate. I was able to work with faculty greats like Diane Blair, Willard Gatewood, Wally Cordes. I've been delighted to find that a new generation of faculty are filling their shoes. You're gonna meet some of our newest stars and two will be hosting this year's update. Thank you, Dan. If the University of Arkansas is as strong as it's ever been, it's in large part due to the increasing quality of its faculty and students. Hello, I'm John Pianowski, a professor of educational leadership and current chair of the Faculty Senate. And I'm Stephanie Ricker Schulte, an associate professor of communication. Let's start with our students. The university continues to grow at a pace that allows us to provide a quality education to our students. Enrollment reached 26,754 students this fall, and that included almost 200 additional graduate students. Our entering freshman class was again stellar. With an overall GPA of 3.64 and an average ACT score of 26, it was also one of our most diverse freshman classes ever, with nearly 20% from underrepresented groups. The new Dean of the Honors College, Linda Kuhn, is excited about this class, which also contained 26 National Merit Scholars. The Honors College at the University of Arkansas is capable of attracting the top students in Arkansas and beyond. Our incoming class of fellows have ACT averages that place them in the top 99 percentile nationally. Of this talented group, almost 80% are from the state of Arkansas, 25% are first-generation college students. More importantly, our students are competing nationally. Last spring, four University of Arkansas juniors were named recipients of three of the most prestigious undergraduate awards in the country, the Truman Scholarship, the Goldwater Scholarship, and the Udall Scholarship. That made us just one of seven institutions in the country to win all three awards. The university's 50th Goldwater winner, Armin Mordazavi, is an honors chemistry and physics double major, as well as a Bodenhammer Fellow. He was also a recipient of a 2015 Statewide Undergraduate Research Fellowship. I came to the University of Arkansas for the different opportunities available through the Honors College. I engage undergraduate research starting in my freshman year. I've also been able to study abroad four different times. I think after graduating this spring, I'll be well equipped to practice medicine. His research mentor is Roger Kepi, a distinguished professor in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. So Armin is a very creative student who recently was able to submit his results for review for possible publication and this is unusual because of all my honor students through the years he's the first one to submit something before he graduated. Tenny Butler from Chattanooga, Tennessee is an honors chemical engineering senior in the College of Engineering. She's also a defender on the women's soccer team. You definitely learn how to manage your time. You learn how to effectively study and you learn, you really learn the value of teamwork. Women's soccer coach Colby Hale is happy to have her on the team. Yeah, you know, she's played a big role on the soccer team in terms of helping us implement core values on and off the field and it has really been instrumental in terms of helping us change a, a, a culture. Despite the rising quality of our students and faculty, we have work to do on our graduation and retention rates. While our current six-year graduation rate of 62% is the highest it has ever been, it's still around 7% lower than our expected graduation rate, based on the quality of our students. Increasing this rate is one of our biggest priorities moving forward. With new leadership, we can take comfort in the rising quality of our students and faculty. Let's highlight a few. One person who's having a great year is Distinguished Professor of Electrical Engineering, Alan Mantooth, who was named the 2015 SEC Faculty of the Year. Already Executive Director of the National Center for Reliable Power Transmission, Mantooth was also named Deputy Director of a new research center focused on vehicle electrical systems. The center will be funded with $18.5 million from the National Science Foundation. So what we're going to be focused on is high power density electronic modules. Arkansas specifically will be working on the advanced packaging techniques, the CAD and design software in order to build these, as well as the circuit designs. And the applications include electric vehicles, heavy equipment, uh, airplanes, and high-speed trains. 
Dr. Mantooth has developed a partnership with Illinois, Stanford, and Howard in developing a new research center that focuses on power electronic devices. For the University of Arkansas and our college, it brings major resources to support our students and the support of our faculty. And I'm excited to think about the impact it's going to have for the United States. Aliza Green, a clinical assistant professor in the special education program, is also doing innovative work. She's the director of the Autism Support Program, supported by Autism Speaks. The College of Education and Health Professions established the Autism Support Program four years ago to assist U of A students with autism spectrum disorders. The purpose of the Autism Support Program is to provide assistance to undergraduates here at the university who are diagnosed with an autism spectrum disorder. Um, these students are qualified students to uh, do the work here, but need help with executive functioning skills like time management, organization, and keeping on track with their coursework. Without the Autism Support Program, I would not be where I am today. They've helped me with my work, they've helped me be in a position to graduate, and they're in a position to help me find employment after I'm through at the university. Students in the Faye Jones School of Architecture and Design recently won five of the nine categories in this year's Lyceum Fellowship Competition. This is a national, invitation-only competition that asks students to rethink the design of the Empire State Building as it pertains to the needs of the elderly. All five of these architecture students were in Frank Jacobus' third-year studio class. Jacobus is an associate professor who researches design theory. With only six weeks to prepare for the contest, it was a huge challenge to get ready. We did this project uh, as an undergraduate program and competed against a lot of graduate students from some of the top schools in the country, and we showed that our students can compete against students from anywhere in the country. Dylan Hursley, a third-year architecture student, ended up taking second in the Lyceum competition, earning a $7,500 travel stipend. It helped me understand how to arrange program within even large structures such as the Empire State Building. Another faculty member to watch is Jennifer Hoyer, an associate professor in world languages, literatures, and cultures. She's worked in the German section since 2007. Hoyer recently published a book on the Holocaust poet Nellie Sox and is actively working with other university professors across Fulbright College to build a Jewish studies program with an understanding of the way that Jewish thought perceives things like the world, like time, like space, automatically puts you into a thinking outside the box, critical thinking mindset. It's been very beneficial to have the other aspects of Jewish life and learning about those has been really great to say, just broaden my horizons of Jewish life. When it comes to supply chain management, Terry Esper wrote the book, literally. Esper, an associate professor in supply chain management department and executive director of the Supply Chain Management Research Center, co-wrote the definitive guide to inventory management with interim dean of the Walton College, Matt Waller. Esper is also a Walton College grad, returning to the university in 2013 after 10 years at the University of Tennessee. Dean Waller, for one, was glad to have Dr. Esper back on campus. I thought it would need to be someone who was interested in students, a great researcher, and interacted well with industry. And I thought of Terry's name, it was the first that came to my mind. The Walton College was not in the business of only engaging in supply chain education, but also transforming supply chain education. And to me, that is really compelling, and it's what brought me back home. Associate Professor of Law Will Foster will be spearheading a new business law certificate program approved by the board last year. This program is designed for students wishing to focus on business or transactional law in preparation for a business law practice or simply to enhance their career prospects. Sure, for the entire state it's important to have counsel uh, for businesses at various stages of their life cycle, from the formative stage through various transactions to even winding up the business. Having counsel that are attuned to those business issues, uh, those unique issues that come up in that context is critical. The business law certificate is important uh, to us students because it allows us to take courses that are uh, directly related to the uh, field of law that we want to practice for the rest of our lives. And then upon graduation, it also helps us uh, sec secure employment in that field. As we approach the end of the year, 2015 is expected to be the hottest on record. That makes the search for renewable energy all the more important. 
Assistant Professor in the Agricultural Education, Communication, and Technology Department, Kate Shoulders, is doing her part. Shoulders worked with the University of Arkansas Office for Sustainability and the Arkansas Energy Office to establish the Renewable Energy Analysis Project, an outreach program that shows ranchers and farmers potential benefits of energy conservation in agricultural settings. The end goal is for agricultural producers to make informed, educated decisions regarding their energy usage. We help them do that through guiding them in the decision-making process by assisting them in deciding which configurations are for them and doing cost analyses. We just want them to be comfortable with the decisions they're making in renewable energy. Officials from Eureka Springs, Hot Springs, Mountain Home, Rogers, Russellville, and Fayetteville participated in a Summer Energy Academy and saw how energy efficiency and sustainability can save residents money. The City of Fayetteville is committed to helping residents and businesses be as energy efficient as possible and take advantage of renewable energy projects wherever practical. One of the most exciting things we have going on is our PACE program, which stands for Property Assessed Clean Energy. That program helps connect property owners inside the City of Fayetteville with low interest financing for renewable energy, energy efficiency, and water conservation projects. In other news, former Dean of the College of Engineering and Chair of the Biomedical Engineering Department, Ashok Saxena, is serving as Provost. Our priorities have to focus on recruiting more graduate students. That includes more masters and more PhD students in a variety of fields that are offered at the University of Arkansas. Saxena assumes the position of top academic officer at a great time. For the fifth straight year, research expenditures exceeded $120 million, and this year jumped to $132 million. Some of the biggest news included a new federally funded research center led by the U of A. The Center for Advanced Surface Engineering will be funded with a $20 million grant from the National Science Foundation. In partnership with Arkansas Industries, the center is expected to create a range of new products in manufacturing, aerospace and defense, agriculture, forestry, food packaging, and healthcare. Min Zhou, who holds the endowed 21st Century Professorship in Mechanical Engineering, will serve as the center's director. The center focuses on discovery and application of novel, multifunctional, and tunable surfaces. These surfaces have a wide range of properties that will impact many Arkansas industries. The center will facilitate the connections between academia and industry and foster the development of novel, value-added products. I completed my PhD with Dr. Min Zhou, and based on the research carried out as part of my PhD, we were able to develop a low-friction, water-repellent coating that we plan to commercialize through the NSF SBIR program. Vice Chancellor for Community, Charles Robinson, has also agreed to serve as Interim Vice Provost for Student Affairs. Student Affairs can do much to support the retention success of our students here at the university. We can expand service learning, we can do more with our learning communities within our university housing, and we can create more leadership and career development programs to help our students while they're here and long after they're gone. The student-run Campus Food Pantry was recently renamed the Jane B. Gerhardt Full Circle Campus Food Pantry. In honor of Jane Gerhardt's years of support, as the pantry continues to meet the emergency food needs of the campus community, its mission is being aided by the Razorback Food Recovery Program. Since the Razorback Food Recovery Program was launched in the spring of 2014, more than 25,000 pounds of food have been recovered and distributed. The university also dedicated several new academic and athletics facilities this fall. Champions Hall, the new 62,000 square foot class and lab building, made possible by a transfer of funds from the athletics department, opened just in time for the fall semester. The Jerry and Jean Jones Student Athlete Success Center addresses the academic, personal, professional, and nutritional needs of the university's approximately 460 student athletes. Finally, the Jim and Joyce Faulkner Performing Arts Center provides the university with something it hasn't had before, a 585-seat state-of-the-art performance venue where our faculty and students can showcase their talents. There are several great things about the newly renovated Faulkner Performing Arts Center, but the best part is our students can now perform and rehearse in a state-of-the-art facility on their own campus.
Thanks to forward planning from the board, which approved the facility renovation and refurbishment plan funded by student fees, the university greatly reduced its backlog of deferred maintenance. The university now has one of the lowest backlogs in the country, less than half the national average. In fact, the national trend has been toward an increasing backlog of deferred maintenance, while the U of A's is steadily decreasing. Building on the university's fourth best fundraising year ever, $116.5 million, Campaign Arkansas has now entered its fourth and perhaps most critical year as it prepares for its public launch next fall. We look forward to formally kicking off Campaign Arkansas next fall. As of right now, we've raised over $414 million, which is 41% of our goal and 39% of the time. Campaign Arkansas is in great shape, and with your help, I know it'll be significantly better. Razorback Athletics also wrapped up another stellar year that saw them finish 16th nationally in the Learfield Sports Directors' Cup, their highest finish ever. This finish was bolstered by the first women's team national title, won by the indoor track and field team. Nathaniel Franks also became the first University of Arkansas male to win the SEC H. Boyd McWhorter Scholar Athlete Award, adding it to the John Wooden Citizen Cup he previously won. Vice Chancellor for Intercollegiate Athletics, Jeff Long, was also named Athletic Director of the Year. Well, I think that combination of academics and athletics has really made an impression across the nation. You know, many times we're viewed as a strong athletic team or conference, but when you combine outstanding academics with that, we're really making an impact across the country, not only with our highest rank in the Director's Cup, but doing it with a, an uncommon 3.24 GPA. Long's reputation rests not just on fielding competitive teams, but on graduating his students. Last spring was the seventh consecutive year the department posted a GPA exceeding 3.0. Graduation success rates have also continued to rise with a total of 200 Razorback student athletes graduating in the past two years. As you saw, it's a great time to be a Razorback and an exciting time to be on our campus. Our faculty and students are thriving. Our Honors College is helping us keep our best students in state, working with outstanding faculty who no longer need to look beyond our borders for better career opportunities. The future of Arkansas is in great hands. Thank you so much for your support and commitment to the University of Arkansas. Thanks for watching and Go, go Hogs! Hogs!